that it would be what it is now in terms of the amount of people that come, how, how popular it has become, and, and where it's not just a scene for art, but also for design and for, for people coming together uh, internationally and connecting. I mean, did you have any idea that that was going to happen? Well, I did and I didn't. Um, I did in the sense that I believed in it. And it also dramatically surpassed what I ever imagined was, was possible. As, um, as it all started to coalesce and really happen, uh, people from all over the world started to come here. And so we went from having this sort of run-down, uninteresting, but beautiful place to a place that became inhabited mainly with artists, fashion people, eventually film and music came. And so it, was, it, it, it dramatically surpassed what I actually had imagined could happen. And what do you think makes this particular fair, uh, art fair, design fair, different from other places in the world? What, what's so special about, about Miami, let's say? I mean, especially from the nascence of where you're coming from, where it was uh, dilapidated and people really weren't thinking of this area as sort of up and coming. Well, if you think about it, I mean, if all of us got together and we said, let's make the most interesting and dynamic cultural happening in the world, and let's pick two cities that we're going to unite in order to achieve that goal, and everybody sat down and made their list, I doubt that Miami and Basel would have been on anybody's list. And that is kind of the potential of thinking differently and having something unexpected occur. We took the, the most powerful, traditional art fair and the solidity of that, and we, we matched it with the sex appeal of Miami. And the combination was just, it was really unbelievable, and it's been uh, quite an experience for me to, to live through it and, and now be here today. <laughs> okay, I have one last question, and, and that's just, where do you see it going from here? I mean, it's growing... Um, it, it's very popular now. People, people know about Art Basel and, and Miami's, uh, just the design team that comes here just every year to sort of put together something very spectacular every year for, for you know, everyone coming from all over the world. Where do you think it's going to go and where do you think it's going? What is the ceiling? Is there a ceiling? What, what happens is, and I think that our collaboration and relationship with Audi is a great example, it keeps surpassing whatever we think is possible. I remember the, the first year we collaborated and, and Audi unveiled the R8. And it was, it, was, it was sitting right inside of Design Miami. It was this unbelievable car. No one had ever seen it. And just having the car there was, was such a major thing. And this juxtaposition of a company that's so committed to design and a new show that actually made design recognized internationally as being, as being collectible. And, and, and you can see how each year it transforms, ultimately culminating in a moment like this. And, and being here in this spectacular structure, seeing the, the commitment that, that this company has to design, it's hard to even think, well, what could surpass this? And I'm sure Audi will come up with something even more exciting next year. Audi is pretty, is pretty amazing. I just want to say I have the opportunity right now to say that Audi always gives back. And this space right here that we're all sitting in, um, they're going to turn this area into a playground once this is over, which is pretty amazing. I love that they give back to the neighborhood and to the children. And that's not something that they had in the script for me, but I wanted to mention that because I, I thought that was really fantastic. And I want to give them a round of applause. Okay, so Tom, you're next. <laughs> Concerning um, the keywords like um, redefinition, um, you're kind of the specialist at that. So, uh, you know, as a design vanguard um, with a passion for experimenting and coming up with new th creative things and ideas all the time, um, what is it that you like about design the most, and, and how does it how does it ignite the artist in you? Crikey, that's, <laughs> that's a really difficult question. I, well, I don't know, I'm very fortunate to be confronted with new experiences almost every day. Um, I mean, this is a good example where I went to the factory in Ingolstadt, which not a lot of people get the privilege of seeing. Big industry committing to design in such a massive way. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> and, but for me... 
Um, design is a very complicated word right now because it covers so many different disciplines. But for me, you know, it's all about innovation and improving through innovation. And, and, and your light, light installation, which is so gorgeous. Um, it's a centerpiece of, of the art of progress. Um, what, what was it about Light Light that was inspiring? And, and can you tell us a little about the intrinsic attributes of that um, and your inspirations for this piece? Yet uh, another complicated question. But yeah. I'm sure as an artist <laughs> you can answer it. Okay. I, I was, um, the car that you're going to see is an extraordinary exercise in slickness and sophistication, right? But underneath it all lies huge amounts of innovation that you'll never see. So my job, which you gave me four weeks to do, right, <laughs> was to try and express that in, um, in, in a way that was easily understandable. So my inspiration was really the, the lightness of the car, because that's very difficult to describe um, through the space frame. And where it overlapped with my interest was really to do with the engineering and the space frames and the lightness of aluminium. So the, the um, installation is really about lightness in terms of weight, but also luminosity in terms of lightness as well. So because Audi have been working a lot on um, some extraordinary headlamps, which again you're going to see in the minute, um, I was very inspired by the, the new technologies in, in lighting and this always gives us um, when technology moves forward, it always gives us an opportunity as designers to do something new and different And did that technology also help inspire you with this and in, in that time crunch with four weeks did, it, did that stress or pressure help you push through to another uh, level in your work or did it sort of you know, I mean, did you go back to sort of sometimes as an artist, I, I think, well, under this, I can go back into the sort of the files and sort of pull out things and, it, and you kind of collage something pretty amazing together. Collage is the right word for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's great. You know, the pressure, pressure makes you, you're an artist, right? You told me that earlier. But the pressure makes you work, and it's the, the problem that, that gives you the solution, if you like. And so for me, it was just a great um, roller coaster ride to get here in time. And what we did as a direct result was finally make something in the UK again, which was fantastic as well. So because we didn't have enough time, we used digital technology, and we used um, young people to make things in, in Britain, and I was very happy with that. I think it's extraordinary because there's something about it that is really light. It's like anti-gravity, essentially. It really feels like it's floating, and it's, it's really beautiful. Well, thank so you. thank you for that. Okay, Stefan. <laughs> um, so as a designer, you have um, an extraordinary feeling for shapes and, and proportions and sizes. I mean, it's very hard, I'm sure, texturally to combine uh, what you see and what you feel into something... Uh, like a car or anything that you ever work with, you know, to put into a structural format. Um, could you tell us, in your opinion, how you end up formatting that in design and how that, that works for you creatively as an artist? Um, I think, I think I, in a very pragmatic way, you know. Maybe it's also a very German way of uh, acting uh, as a designer um, in combining function and aesthetics together. And um, you see it in our work at Audi Design, but let's talk maybe also about furniture whatsoever. If you, have a, if you have a great chair, for example, it has been done, it's a famous design, it's fantastic aesthetic, and you sit down and you feel not comfortable after half an hour. And you it's, about it does, one no, 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 come on. So I'm, I'm very. <laughs> We will try it out later. No, but what I want to say is if, if it doesn't work, if you don't feel comfortable, if it's not functional, you will not, you will not be able to uh, ap appreciate the aesthetic in the end. So these two things are belonging together. And, and as we all know, because I'm sure we all drive, it, it, there, the car is an extension of yourself, and, and you want to be comfortable whether you're driving long distances or if you're in traffic or what have you. And how do you know when you're working with something that that comfort level is going to be lasting and that, you know, because it, sometimes when you, when you sit in something or when you taste something, it's delicious, but after a while, it's actually too much of sugar, too much salt. So how does that work for design? Well, you know, when, when you do a, a car, it's, it's really not only talking about design. We have to say it's really the synthesis of many, many um, 
teams and of many technical aspects, uh, aerodynamics working together, first of all. We are not having four weeks. We take uh, five years to develop a car. And we always have to find the balance in between the aesthetic and the technical impact. And in the end of the day, um, I personally believe you need to have uh, always a technical innovation, also to do a big step in design. And then, when you can do this big step in technology and in design, it is also long-lasting. It's a, it's a very sophisticated,